Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. February already, the final month of the meteorological winter. Statistically, it's as cold as January, but in recent years it really has lacked a bite more often than not. Nonetheless, I just thought I would quickly travel back through time. 31 years ago and the UK was about to experience one of its most severe February cold spells, 1991. The chart here is from the 7th and by then very cold air had moved across continental Europe and into the UK. The, some of the lowest temperatures there were in southern and central Britain. There was very heavy snow as well. A few statistics I'll just put up here. The one I think which most people remember is that the cold spell was associated with the wrong type of snow, according to British Rail at least. It certainly caused lots and lots of disruption on the railways, the roads too. One of the key problems, of course, the wrong type of snow, what they meant was it was very, very powdery because temperatures were well below freezing even through the days. And I think that caused major problems with the electric motors on lots of the commuter trains in uh, London and the home counties in particular. Well, as I say, that's a long, long time ago, although to me, I remember it almost like it was yesterday. Coming back to the immediate future, and can we expect anything like that? Well, I'll start by taking a look at the first week. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 1st. At the outset, it's dry in much of the UK. There's little bits of rain in places, but not a great deal. And in the far north, some colder air is in the mix, and that's bringing a few wintry showers. High pressure, which really dominated the scene for much of January, is still influential, but it's centered a little bit further southwest, and that's allowing more of an Atlantic influence across the UK. In the short term, not a great deal changes. There's some patchy rain around, it becomes quite mild. But then the change takes place through Thursday. A more active weather front starts to push southeastwards across all parts of the country, and to its north, there is colder air. You can see the white shading there highlighting wintry showers. The weather front clears away southeastwards through Friday. It turns colder for a time, but it doesn't last long. And then as we go through the weekend, it's really rinse and repeat. There's an Atlantic flow, patchy rain, mostly in the north. It turns milder, as I say. And that high pressure to the southwest doesn't really shift at all. By the end of the sequence, 21 GMT, Tuesday the 8th, there's colder air again moving in from the west, the northwest, but it's not particularly cold by any means. And in the south, temperatures will still be close to the average. Just to take a look at the air mass profile through that first week, starts here with uh, blues then in the far north, as I mentioned for some, some cold air, bring those wintry showers. But as you head southwards, it's greens, and you can see the mild, very mild air indeed, just there to the southwest. Just quickly running it, and blues move in, then milder air returns, then there's another pocket of cold air. It's all coming from the west, though. We're not seeing a cold pattern becoming established, not by any means. So it's a rather changeable scene with temperatures fluctuating. Just to take a look at the two meter temperature uh, table showing uh, London, Cardiff, Edinburgh and Belfast through this first week. Relatively mild here in London for much of a period, maximums of 12s, 13s, a little bit colder at times. And as you head north, the uh, values are lower. So Edinburgh and Belfast generally a bit colder. Not a great deal of frost is looking like. I think it's worth making that point. In the cities here, the minimums are shown to be remaining above, uh, above zero. I think in more rural areas, temperatures will be dipping lower at times. But compared to what we saw through much of January, where high pressure was centred over the southern half of the UK, it does look as though the frost risk is going to be significantly reduced through the first week of February. The bigger picture, so Europe, uh, Saturday, 
the fifth at 15 GMT. Here's the UK, relatively mild, but at this point we do have somewhat lower temperatures than on a number of the other days. France, mild. Spain, Germany. You've really got to go a long way north and east yet again to find proper winter. Alternatively, you can take a shortcut perhaps and go to the Alps. You can see the blue shading here where it's sub-zero. Italy also relatively mild. Not a very wintry picture, not like some Februarys from years gone by. Looking at the wind gusts, I think, because this may be more consequential in the UK, once again, rather than the temperatures. London, up to 35 miles an hour, according to the GFS. Cardiff, a little bit windier there, 40. And then as you head northwards, Edinburgh and Belfast, some potentially very windy conditions if the GFS is right over 50 miles an hour on one or two days there. Taking a look at the ensemble uh, plot using the MoGreps data, London wind speed gusts fits in quite well with the GFS table, 30s to between 30s and 40s on some days. So quite windy at times, not exceptionally windy, but I'd say quite windy. Going further north to Glasgow, 50s on several days, a few of the ensemble runs going a little bit higher than that. Windy or very windy. Once more, stronger winds in the north of the UK in general than, than in the south. Rainfall. There hasn't been much to say about these aggregate charts in recent weeks, um, generated using data from the GFS model. One on the left is for days 0 to 5, for one on the right, days 0 to 10. Again, amounts of rain in the south and the east, are, they are low. Parts of the south, according to this, see zero millimetres of accumulated rain through the 10 day period. It's a much wetter picture, though, as you head northwestwards in excess of 100 millimetres there in Western Scotland over the 10 day period. I think the GFS may be underestimating the rain risk here to an extent in southern and central regions. For example, the weather front which comes through on the first Thursday and Friday of a, of a forecast period could well be a little bit more active than the GFS is suggesting. And if I bring up the next uh, slide. This is uh, also showing accumulated rainfall for days 0 to 5 and days 0 to 10, but it's using data from the European ECM model, often considered to be the very best of the global models. Here, the rain totals in the south for days 0 to 5 are between 3 and 10 millimetres, and between uh, 5 and about 15 millimetres through the day. 0 to 10 period. ECM therefore going for a somewhat wetter picture even in southern and eastern Britain but not wet by any means. I think it's just making perhaps more for example of that cold front which pushes southwards quite early on in the forecast period. GFS has it weakening more. So how do the other deterministic models compare to the GFS at one week ahead. Just to recap, the GFS, Tuesday the 8th of February, high pressure centred to the south and the east of the UK, low pressure there to the northwest, a very standard positive North Atlantic oscillation pattern. The Canadian model, similar high pressure here, a little bit further northwards. Details, as I always say, will vary for general profiles. Comparable though, German ICO model, once again, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the northwest. European ECM, high pressure again from the south, having quite a lot of influence. Um, and finally, the UK Met Office model. If anything here, the high pressure is building further northwards and the more unsettled conditions are restricted to the northern half of Scotland there. Nonetheless, good agreement for a positive NAO pattern higher pressure over the Azores, lower pressure over Iceland, an Atlantic flow affecting the UK. It's 
just really a question of how much influence the high pressure to the south has, how far northwards it will be building. I think all in all it suggests that amounts of rain in southern Britain will be remaining low. The ECM charts may be closer to the mark than the GFS ones today, so perhaps between three and five millimetres of rain through, that, through the first week and even in the drier parts of the south. Well, that because week one, what about week two? Trends and probabilities, of course, with the ensemble data, not specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London and Southern England, across the top it shows forecast upper air temperatures from all of the runs in the ensemble. Quite straightforward. On this occasion, most of them are above the thick black line, which is the 30-year norm, suggesting it's often going to be mild at the 850 HPA level, about 1500 metres above sea level. Rainfall across the bottom here, a few spikes, not very many, so quite a dry picture through much of the second week. But towards the very end, there are signs of an increasing number of runs forecasting rain, perhaps an indication that change is on the way for the middle of the month. Going up to Glasgow, across the top, the uh, runs are fluctuating around the 30-year average more, so both above it and below it, as opposed to on the London plot where they were mostly staying above it. That means that temperatures will generally be close to the average through the second week, and the other difference is rainfall across the bottom here. It is actually quite a wet picture now which is being shown. Lots of spikes there and some of them are quite big. Will there be any snow? Well, the snow row across the bottom was uh, suggesting there wouldn't be in London. I didn't even mention it because the valleys were so, um, so low, but in the north they are a little bit higher, between seven and eight. A low chance of snow falling, but perhaps a little bit at times as we get those colder pulses of air moving in from the west for northwest. Two meter temperature data table here for London. Light greens are dominating the columns. There's even a reasonable amount of yellow beginning to appear. Yellow indicates runs forecasting maximums between 11 and 15 Celsius very mild for the time of year. But the light greens are dominant uh, shading in the columns through the second week, therefore it's pointing towards above average temperatures for much of the time. A little bit of dark green there towards the very end, but I wouldn't place too much stock in those runs at the moment because they are in a small minority. Up to Glasgow and here there is also a lot of the light green, but there's more dark green in the mix. Runs forecasting maximums between 1 and 5 Celsius. Therefore, as I hinted with the upper air temperature profile fluctuating, probably somewhat similar down at the ground level. Overall, a little bit milder than the average through the week, but probably some days when it turns colder, but the days when it's milder, just doing enough to offset the colder ones. Surface pressure data table for York is showing some signs of a change, I would suggest, this week. Initially, oranges and yellows making up the bulk of these columns. Those are runs going for between 1,011 to 1,040 millibars, higher than average pressure, at least most of them are. Nonetheless, towards the end, the amount of yellows and oranges begins to decrease. There's more greens, blues, and a little bit of purple at the very end. Just once more, hinting that things could be starting to change by the middle of February. The GEFS Ensemble Mean Pressure Plot for the 11th of February. So, at this point, high pressure still looks to be having a good deal of influence just far north there, perhaps where there's a more vigorous Atlantic flow bringing 
uh, longer outbreaks of rain, more showers um, at times, a wetter picture generally there. And the European ECM plot for the same time is very, very consistent, the high pressure continuing to have much influence across at least southern and central Britain by the 11th of February. The day to 10, day 10 to 15 pressure anomaly chart from the GEFS suggests the strongest positive anomaly will become centre to the southeast of the UK, negative anomaly to the north. Basically, it's again supporting the idea of a positive North Atlantic oscillation pattern, relatively mild with the weather in the UK, Western Europe coming in from the Atlantic. It could perhaps be indicating though that pressure is starting to decline southeastwards towards the middle of Feb, hence more of an Atlantic influence and a more changeable or even unsettled pattern possibly uh, arriving through the middle of the month, but it's very low confidence in that. It's just something I think that needs to be watched through the coming days. The postage stamp plot, which shows forecast pressure patterns from all of the individual runs within the GEFS, really just adds weight to the general um, idea that by Monday the 14th of February, High pressure may well still be having a good deal of influence, but perhaps a weakening one. It's just suggestions that it will be declining southwards. It's a relatively mild picture, which has been shown on the majority of these stamps with a positive NAO pattern. Again, reinforcing the idea from the ensemble mean and really all the computer model data at the moment. Not much sign of wintry conditions according to the postage stamps or the ensemble data in general or the individual deterministic model runs. Strong support for this westerly based Atlantic driven pattern. It really at the moment seems to be, the key question is really how much influence high pressure to the south of the UK will be having. So, to summarise the next two weeks, week one, it begins quite mild and will be some patchy rain around. During Thursday and Friday, a more active weather front clears southwards. It is followed by colder and showery conditions. In the north, some of the showers could fall as sleet or snow. That change doesn't last for long though because milder air quickly returns from the west. It's then a rather changeable scene through the rest of the first week, but rain mostly will be focused on the northern half of the UK. In the south, it's often going to be dry. Through the week as a whole, it's going to be quite windy at times, particularly in the north. Week two, changeable, but once more high pressure continues to have a good deal of influence, particularly in southern and central regions. Therefore, wettest in the north and the amounts of rain in the south probably stay quite small. Rather mild in the south, in the north temperatures will be closer to the average on the whole, but I think even there the likelihood is they will be slightly above Above, rather than more likely to be slightly above and slightly below. Towards the middle part of the month, there are some tentative indications of a transition to a more unsettled pattern, but at the moment that's just something to keep an eye on. Well, there we have it. Are we going to see a repeat of February 1991? Never say never but it looks extremely unlikely based on the current computer model data. If anything, the indications are that this February is going to be following the trend of recent years, and in many ways, there could well be more of a spring field for weather at times rather than a wintry one. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. 
If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.